Okay, tell me if any of these sound familiar to you. <clears throat> Do you ever tolerate things that you are unhappy with just because you don't want to talk? Are you overly concerned about what people think about you? Do you ever find yourself struggling in silence when a simple request from someone can solve your problem? If so, you might just be an introvert. Is the type of shallow analysis that you will find on the internet when it comes to measuring a person's introversion and extroversion. And it was like this for a while until in 2013, Susan Cain published her bestseller Quiet, and her analysis took introverts from being this misunderstood, unsocial demographic to delicate zen masters who were perceptive beyond our understanding. In reality, introversion and extroversion exist as a large spectrum that is difficult to clearly define and overlap with each other a lot. Today, we're going to be looking at some of the most common misconceptions about introverts and why we shouldn't be so quick to judge. Myth number one. But I thought introverts don't like people. This makes it sound like introverts would rather be waterboarded than making small talk or that their dream home would be some isolated lighthouse on a remote island. But a study from the University of Illinois found that extroverts and introverts spend about the same amount of time alone and about the same amount of time socializing. Researchers also found that introverts showed pretty much the same increase in happiness as extroverts when hanging out with other people. So if introverts spend about the same amount of time socializing and get the same mood boost when they do, why does this stereotype exist? In general, introverted people have a lower tolerance for stimulation, including social stimulation, and naturally dislike the feeling of being drained and overwhelmed. It takes less time for them to reach their level of satisfaction from socializing, and more time to recover from it. Disliking the negative feelings of overstimulation often gets confused with disliking people. They don't actually hate humankind. They hate the exhaustion that comes with dealing with it. Myth number two. I thought all introverts are sad and anxious. Some myths about introverts and extroverts are extremely persistent. Introverts are people haters. Extroverts won't shut up. Introverts are neurotic. Extroverts are shallow. Let's re-examine these stereotypes. Essentially, pretty much everyone gets energized and feels good from social interaction. People by nature are social creatures, and this includes extroverts and introverts alike. The myth that introverts are depressed and anxious likely comes from the need of introverts to withdraw in order to recharge. And sometimes, introverts accidentally go too far. Withdrawing to the point of isolation, no matter what your personality type, can lead to feeling disconnected and lonely both of which hang together with sadness and anxiety. So the easiest way to think about it is this. For both introverts and extroverts, interacting with people is generally a good thing. But for introverts, being alone is also a good thing. This gives introverts the best of both worlds. They can feel happy alone and happy when they choose to tap into their inner extrovert and interact with others. In other words, introversion and extroversion may be personality traits, but they're also behaviors. Myth number three. But all introverts Introverts prefer to be alone. Introverts do need to recharge more often and for longer compared to extroverts, but they don't need to be alone to do it. Introverts burn out from overstimulation, but when they need to recharge, they're often happy to have a partner with them. For introverts, it's a balancing act. Too much isolation can leave them lonely and insecure, and too much stimulation can leave them exhausted, but they don't necessarily need a break from people, instead a break from stimulation. For example, an introvert might hate parties, but it's not because there are people present. It's just too much of everything. From the dancing and the lights and the loud music and people, including strangers, it can be quite overwhelming. As an alternative, introverts would enjoy a dinner party where they can sit and connect or chat for hours with their best friends. Again, it's not people per se, it's the stimulation. It can be dangerous to quickly classify people as either introverts or extroverts, when in reality most of us lies somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. Instead of making a quick judgment, it may be better to understand each person individually and learn about their introverted and extroverted tendencies. I'm an introverted extrovert, if you're wondering, and that probably tells you nothing about me. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe for future content. We really appreciate your support. Also, Follow us on our social media and visit our website at thetopessentials.com for more tips on how to live your best life. See you guys soon.